and welcome back to A Beginner's Guide to Long Range Shooting. Today, this is our fourth segment. If you haven't seen rifle selection, bullet selection, optic selection, I recommend you check those videos out before you watch this one. This is gonna be all the equipment you're gonna to wanna to buy after you've chosen your rifle, after you've bought your bullets, after you've bought your scope. This is basically for the rest of it. So kind of like, um, what should you do next? So let's get started. Uh, we're gonna start with the essentials, so this isn't necessarily a budget guide to a beginner's guide to long range shooting. This is just basically a beginner's guide. Budget is considered as well, but it's generally just a beginner's guide. So the first thing you absolutely do need is a rifle, which we've covered in previous videos. Something budget like this, like a Remington 783 is gonna be fine, as long as it's a heavy barrel or recommended as a bare heavy barrel. You take even something like this. So this is a full on custom. So you could let your gunsmith know, I want something really nice. This is a beautiful, beautiful gun. <laughs> and uh, an awesome scope. You're gonna want, if let's say you're on a budget, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 is the way to go. If you are like that 300 bucks, save your money, wait till you got 150 bucks more and buy the Arkin. It's, 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 it's a no brainer. It really has the most internal adjustment, the best glass, and they got a great warranty and a zero stop. So really, really recommend those ones. And for everything I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna be leaving you some links in the descriptions below for you, just so you don't have to go kind of scrounging around the internet to kind of find these things. And as well, these links are affiliate links, so I do get a little commission. So basically, if you click the link, buy the product, I get a tiny commission, which helps the channel. So yeah. So you got your rifle, you got your scope, you got your ammo. Um, next thing I'm gonna recommend is a target. So um, what I did when I used to shoot in fields is um, I, I basically found some scrap steel. Steel is ideal. And they were small pieces of steel because there was whatever the scrap had. So I had some like, you know, something like this and you'd shoot, you'd miss, you'd shoot, you'd miss. And when you're shooting in, in like, like a, uh, a hay field, you do not see your misses. If the soil is kind of damp, you will never see your misses and you're just gonna, be blowing through ammo like there's no tomorrow. And I have wasted a lot of ammo, a lot of it, which is extremely frustrating, especially if it's windy. Now you're no longer just dealing with up and down, you're dealing with left and right and all over the place. So what I did was I bought a two foot by two foot steel target. So I set it up at 600, take a shot. Oh, I'm really low and really right. Make some adjustments, I'm dead center. Take a shot, dead center, we're good to go. It makes it so much easier. While you know the cost of like a two foot by two foot steel plate, th there's some cost involved. It costs about $200 Canadian, which means it's gonna be even cheaper in the US. And you, I think it was like a three eighths or a half inch, and you don't even need that thick. And you don't even need AR500 steel, which is what I went with. So I wanted something that would pretty much last forever. AR500 is pretty much the standard in terms of being bulletproof, but you could go with, uh, even potentially mild, mild steel, but obviously not if you're shooting steel core and not if you're shooting some heavy, heavy magnums, uh, unless you're shooting beyond probably like six, 700. So as long as you don't get craters, the goal is not to get ricochets. So if you don't know what to do, just buy AR 500 steel, get yourself a nice two foot by two foot target, and then buy yourself some smaller targets to put beside it. Because obviously long range shooting, the goal of it isn't to be too easy. You want something that's a constant challenge. So when I'm making my videos, I take my shot, I make my adjustment on the big one, and then I film myself hitting the little guys. It makes it easy. And it, I waste less ammo. <laughs> so yeah, having good quality steel is, uh, having a good size of steel is the way to go. Next, you are going to want shooting bags. So for a beginner, something like the Caldwell kit, like this, is gonna be fine. After years of use, it will wear out and die. And you may want to upgrade to something like this and a front bag like this, uh, which is not quite a front bag. It's like a front riser. It's adjustable. It's really, really nice. It's, I think, the Caldwell The Rock, which, ooh, really, really nice. You can adjust the front up and down. I really do like it. So that's what I've been using lately. And actually, I've been using occasionally the Kdex Falcon Light Bipod, which um, is a really, really great quality bipod. More kind of designed for the PRS shooter, just because it's quickly deployable. You can move these legs like all positions. It can tilt, it can pan, it can do everything. Uh, so great for PRS. For long range shooting, it's great too. Uh, it's just more targeted market for that. And if you are shooting off a bench, like a wooden bench, I definitely recommend getting these spikes because you can 
put them into the wood and apply some forward pressure so you can preload your bipod, which is going to help. So uh, next is a good toolkit. So what I recommend, well, actually, you know what? Let's start with what I had originally. I had one of these big Wheeler fat wrenches. They're good, don't get me wrong. This thing still works and it still works great. But look at the size of this thing. Now, I used to buy all my equipment kind of individually from like hardware stores, this place, that place. And it was so inconvenient because I had a giant duffel bag that I bring with myself to the, to the range every time. And it's just so much to lug around. So let's look at the size of this. There it is. <laughs> and the size of this. They're basically the same. This is the Fix-It Sticks kit. This is what I'm going to recommend you buy. So it comes with like literally every piece of equipment that you possibly are going to need. I have added about two more pieces to this kit just because I deal with a lot of rifles, a lot of scopes, a lot of scope rings uh, that aren't generally standard. And when you're dealing with a lot of, let's say, things that are made in China, they don't always use the same size of screws as that are screws that are standard. So Fix-It Sticks pretty much is all of them that are standard. So you probably won't need to add anything, just me. <laughs> so it does come with a little T-wrench, very handy. It comes with a torque wrench. Now this is the important part of the kit. Uh, this takes up, this replaces this. <laughs> Isn't that wild? So yeah, I, I really, really, really like this kit. It's got everything you could possibly dream of. And there is one thing I have added to the kit Actually, before I talk about that, it does come with a scope leveling tool, which this part you mount on the rail, and this you mount on the top of the scope, so on the top caps. So you level both of these, and then you tighten your scope rings. Another one that I really like to use is the spur leveling system. So this, sorry, this, you slide it on your rail, and this, you slide it on top. And it acts as a wedge, and the angle of this is going to make it so the bottom of your scope is going to be level with the top of the rail. So no bubbling involved, you just slide this on, slide the wedge in, tighten up your scope rings, and you're done. So I, I like things being really simple, like stupid simple, just because I do so many of these. I do a ton of scope reviews, and it can get pretty long. I also have the uh, the other Wheeler kit, which you, you put one on your... Um, on your rail, you then you clamp the other one on the barrel, you level the two, then you remove the one from the rail and you put it on the top of the scope and then ah, it's just a lot of work. Whereas these ones are quick and easy and that's how it should be. So this is a very, very strong recommendation. So absolutely, I think everybody should get a, a good pair of torque wrenches. Just in the past, before I had any torque wrenches, I would kind of go with by feel and that's not always going to work. At one point, I did crush a, uh, a scope tube. Uh, I didn't quite crush it like irreparably. It's just that when I was trying to adjust the, uh, the parallax, it would do a click. And I knew at that point that something was amiss. <laughs> so get yourself a good torque wrench. Next, you're going to want, in terms of, let's say, shooting equipment, let's see here. A rangefinder. So a good rangefinder, or even a cheap rangefinder. Okay, let's go with the bottom of the barrel. So this is the SND way. Uh, I mean, there's tons of different um, rangefinder companies. This is like if you start out the, for a budget, this is going to be great. This is I've used this up to 700 meters, and it's about eight meters off. Now, in terms of ballistics, that's not a big deal. For shooting 6.5 Creedmoor or 308, that's not the end of the world at all. If you are going to be shooting beyond that, you're going to need something of better quality. So there are a lot of other ones out there, but my personal preference is the Sig Sauer Kilo, Kilo 2400 BDX. This not only range finds like ridiculously far, but it does a lot of things that most um, range finders don't. So it has ballistics in here. On your app, you're going to basically punch in all your data, tell it to pair with this, and then you range find. You're, it's going to range find at a thousand, and it's going to say, okay, for at a thousand, you're 6.5, you need to dial 10 mils up. Now, another addition to this is a Kestrel. Now, these are not, so this, this part is not absolutely necessary. The rangefinder, I'd say, is probably necessary. Uh, the Kestrel is not absolutely necessary. This is going to be great for gauging the wind. You're going to put your ballistic data on here, and it's going to tell you, okay, well, you need to hold a mil or 3.5 MOA right. And it makes it easier, and you waste less ammo. Okay, I'm going to leave links, obviously, for everything we've mentioned in the descriptions below for you. 
So, um, next, spotting scopes. So we do use spotting scopes at the range, but only when we're shooting around 600 meters. Now there's a very good reason. Beyond that, if it's too bright, um, like the image gets too saturated and it, it doesn't portray a good image and it doesn't make good footage. Within 600, the image is nice and sharp. You can see the trace, you can see the mist, you can see the impact, it looks great. But the minute you get beyond that, you get a lot of the mirage, the image quality kind of deteriorates, even with the good quality spotting scopes. Which is why beyond that distance, I recommend you get something like this. This is the long shot target camera system. This is going to be for the serious long range shooter. So if you're shooting at, uh, I'd say anywhere past 600 meters, or if you don't have a spotting scope, like anywhere even before that, uh, out to even two miles. The system will work out to two miles. And it's really, really amazing because you're gonna be placing your camera, this camera system, about 25 feet in front of your target. Now, don't be too worried about hitting it. It's, it's fairly small, so the odds are pretty small. And you're not aiming for it as well. So you place it about 25 feet in front of your target, and like keep this in mind. It's like, it's as if you were there. It's as if you were 25 feet in front of your target, somebody shoots, you're like, it was there, it was right there. <laughs> which is awesome and as well in this in the system you pair it to your phone and then you could just watch it on your phone and if you didn't catch it well you could have placed a record and you could just keep re-watching it until you do see it so you can also zoom in in the rewatch in, in the replay and you'll be able to catch that miss which is awesome so that's what I recommend I strongly do recommend that for long-range shooting if you're planning on doing this for a long time it kind of seems like the more you spend, the more it's going to be worthwhile in terms of a long-term investment. So, yes, there's a lot of things you may or may not need to spend money on, but, I mean, it's, it's really nice to have. So, uh, other than that, other thing, a few other things I do recommend you have is a really good range bag. I've had this one for a while, and all these pockets are super, super handy. <laughs> also, staples and a stapler. You always find yourself going... Crap, I'm out of staples. You know, a cheap stapler, some cheap staples, they work great. Uh, in terms of, let's say, zeroing at 100, this is my target paper. This is the cheapest target paper you can buy. It's just plain old white sheets. Bring your stapler, bring a black marker, put a little dot, and what I do is, when I go up to my range, I bring a, it's about a two foot by about this tall, so it's like four feet, and I put a little angle brace in the back. I completely cover the thing with white paper. I bore sight my rifle, and I take a shot. I guarantee you I'm gonna hit somewhere on this board. Now, a lot of people, they, they seem to think, well, I need to buy target paper. Well, you absolutely do not. <laughs> what a waste. I mean, and, and the smaller you make it like your bullseye, the more you're going to be inclined to uh, aim small, miss small, really. That, that's kind of the goal. If you put a big black dot, your groups are absolutely just going to be bigger. It's just inherently going to happen. So I definitely do recommend you buy yourself white paper. <laughs> I'll leave links in the description below for white paper. <laughs> so if you want to support me, buy some white paper. <laughs> oh, and also, you absolutely do need patches on your range bag. It definitely helps. <laughs> Ear protection and eye protection. So these are things that you should not avoid. And you know what, why not make eye protection awesome? That's right. These are the Oakley Sutros and they look fabulous and they well protect your eyes enough and they protect you from the sun. And you look really cool. A little douchey, but really cool. Um, in terms of ear protection, so when you're at the range, you absolutely want to dominate everybody out there. When you come up with one of these, a Kevlar helmet with integrated uh, ear protection, people are gonna respect you instantly. No way someone's gonna start talking smack to you. Actually, so what I have on this helmet is the Walker Razors. These aren't bad, they're, they're very, very popular. They're not bad, they're actually a good kind of intermediate ear protection. They did come on a headband, it's just that I have three or four ear protection and I got a helmet which from AITacticalSolutions.com which have the most affordable uh, armor in Canada. So if you are looking for uh, armor, check them out. Uh, anyway, so back to ear protection. I have a lot of them. So uh, my, my personal preference, my favorite ear protection uh, is the 3M Peltor Tactical Sport. 
So the, the sound in these is probably the clearest. When you put these on, you're like, wow, it sounds so natural. It sounds like the same as pretty much not wearing them which is why I love the 3M Peltor Tactical Sports. They are comfortable, they are nice. Now, for any of the, let's say, bigger brand ear protections, you, I'm gonna strongly recommend you get something like the, um, the Ready Up Gear uh, gel pieces. So they, you basically just replace this kind of piece and put a gel piece. I wore this all day at SHOT Show at the range day, which was a blast, by the way, and, <sighs> It was amazing. They were so comfortable all day. I have zero regrets getting these. They make a good quality uh, hearing protection system into a comfortable hearing protection system. Where the original ones aren't bad, but I mean, after like, I'd say about three hours, you're like, okay, you know, they're not that comfortable. So I definitely do recommend getting, it's called the Ready Up Gear. So check those out. Another option if you are looking for hearing protection is the axles. Now these ones are really good for a reason because if you like to listen to music while you shoot, if you know you're alone in a field, you like to listen to some tunes, um, these have, well, you connect Bluetooth, you connect them through Bluetooth through your phone and you can listen to your favorite beats while you shoot, which is nice. <laughs> it's nice to shoot and listen to music. I usually don't just because if I listen to music and shoot, then I might get a copyright thing in my filming, so I just don't but these are really nice. I definitely do recommend them if you're looking for a good pair of Bluetooth ones. But in terms of the best, the best so far that I've found is gonna be the 3M Peltor Tactical Sports. Check them out in the links in the descriptions below. Also, I think we've covered most things. Uh, Kestrel, rangefinder, spotting scope, spotting scope camera, long range shooting camera. Yes, 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 yes. Well guys, that covers our fourth segment of a, a beginner's guide to long range shooting. If you are more experienced than myself and you have other things that you'd like to recommend to a, for, a long, for a beginner's guide to long range shooting, please leave them in the comments below. We've covered a lot of things. Um, and remember, for the essentials, shooting rest, that's gonna be the first thing you're gonna want. Ear protection, eye protection, a target, absolutely necessary. And the rest is kind of, you go from there. Like that, that's the basics. And I mean, you can keep adding to the, your kit. It, it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, I really appreciate you guys watching the channel. We have a lot more uh, videos um, of, of rifle reviews, scope reviews. I, I keep these as unbiased as possible. And um, that's it. But guys, thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.